Hey gang, it's Bad Avenger. Um, this video is a special video. It's a little off kilter from the rest of them. This is basically um, dealing with uh, DC Comics and the importance of the new rebirth that's going on and kind of things to make you aware. But really, um, this video is about um, price variance. But before I get into that, I want to talk a little bit about uh, comic books in general. Um, you had stages that comic books are regulated under. You got Golden Age, Silver, Bronze, Modern. And what I think what's going on with DC right now is the emergence of another age. Now, normally when you have one company, the other company does the same thing. I think Marvel tried. Once DC did the rebirth. Because at one time Marvel was doing well with Marvel now point three or whatever it was. Or point two. And then rebirth happened and Marvel all of a sudden decided they had to do something else. A Marvel point now, point four, point whatever. And right now they're in turmoil. <clears throat> but with all things in comic books, um eventually they'll get their act together. Um when i don't know and frankly this is not the video for it well i'm talking about the importance now of what's going on in dc and that a lot of people could be missing the boat on what's going on in, in comics as far as dc is concerned what dc is doing now they're setting the pace for the future of the comic books you can tell how they're they're masterfully doing this by having um, their characters, the storylines are more um, integrated, the characters are well thought out, the introduction of old characters, the reintroduction of old characters, I mean, um, sporadically popping up instead of all of a sudden getting hit in the face with a whole bunch of <coughs> retelling like they used to do. When they did like Crisis or um, uh, Crisis of Infinite Earth or uh, what was the other one that they had. But it's like all of a sudden everything changed. What's going on now, they're taking their time. And it's great because you're seeing great things happen as far as comic books are concerned. You got... Characters coming out, reintroduced, such as Dolphin. You got Maxima, she's going to show up in Supergirl. Plastic Man and Batman Metal. You got the Legion of Superheroes waiting in the wings. And one thing that I did like, they kept some of the great things that happened in New 52 and integrated into the Rebirth, especially with Batman. <clears throat> so what I'm showing you, um, all these books that I'm showing you are newsstand editions. And the reason I'm showing you this is because newsstand editions, DC newsstand edition, compromise 1% basically of sales of comic books that they have, which means that 1% of these books are being sold or, I mean, are being put out on a newsstand. It's not saying what's being sold because... Um, you can even take that down even more to another 1% of the 1% of these books are being sold. Then you got to deal with the fact that when you buy them and take them up to the register, you got to deal with the sales associate with their gorilla hands. And I've had a few books that I had to rechange because of the handling a cashier has when they have your books in their hands. They don't understand how to hold a comic book. But <laughs> I digress, getting back to what I'm talking about. <clears throat> the importance of these price variants is that, one, in reference to, like, if this was an Action Comics Direct Edition and it sold, but what didn't sell would still possibly be in the bins at the comic book shop. A direct edition comic book. That's what you're facing. Newsstand 
if it's not sold, it either goes back to where it came from or they get destroyed. There is no back um, box bins of these uh, newsstand books. And it's only a few key places that sell newsstand comics. All right. Also, with these newsstand books, there is one drawback, the price point. Now, newsstand books cost a dollar more. When you DC um, newsstand books, you can tell them apart, excuse me, by the price at $3.99 or $4.99 if it's a um, larger size book. And it also has U.S. Canada underneath the price. And uh, the barcode is slightly different. And the reason I'm saying a lot of people might be missing the boat, because now you're seeing a new age being born. And if you're not attuned to it, you're going to miss it. And comic books are generational, which means every five to ten years, a new generation of readers comes along. So, these books now, you buy them. And see, like I said, I'm a long-term collector. I don't really buy uh, books for flipping. I'm not a flipper. Um, nothing against flippers. If that's your call, that's your call. But this video is for those who have time to spend on their hands and really like books. And the reason I say that is because back in the day, characters like Venom, Deadpool, um, name the ones that are hot right now. When they first came out, they were not hot. Todd McFarlane's Venom was not hot for a while. Deadpool definitely was not hot for a while. You know, and Harley Quinn, well, yeah, Harlequin, you know, it took time. And once they became hot, the books became valuable. So wouldn't you think that you would like to have been at that time when they first came out and you just bought them for 35 cents, 60 cents or $1.25, which was the cover prices on those books. Now you're hunting these books down. I mean, people are buying these books. They're paying hundreds of dollars for these books, when if you had the foresight back in the day, if you was around at that time, you picked them up for cover price. That's what I'm trying to establish and make you aware of when it comes to comic books. Let me talk as well as show books. This book, Action 976, is the reintegration of the New 52 and the modern Superman into one. Okay, and all these are, like I said, price variants that I have picked up. And I have many more, but I can't, I'm not going to sit here and make a two-hour video showing these price variant books. I just picked up key books that I, I will show you that, that kind of have importance. And this is the reemergence of Superman. Our Superman that we have now. This book is the key book for all the DC books that are coming out. This is the beginning of... And it even shows a slight reorigin of things that have happened, such as the fact that you don't see the fact that Batman, I mean, Superman and um, Wonder Woman had a relationship. It never happened. It, it, and it just never happened with this new integration because of what is going on with um, the button and later issues of Batman and, and Flash dealing with Dr. Manhattan taking 10 years of... Um, DC continuity and changing or doing whatever he did. He played with DC uh, continuity and it's starting to revert back to its normal self. Um, I will show you some books dealing with that later on. We got Action Comics 979. This is the re-emergence of the Superman Revenge Squad. Like I said, you're seeing these characters being reinvigorated, being re-brought back out. And some things have changed. Aquaman number 24. This is the beginning of the revitalization um, of Aquaman mythos with him being deposed as king and this gentleman here taking over as the king of um, Atlantis. This is the hot book that a lot of people miss and I've talked about it 
uh, ad nauseum in some of my other videos. Aquaman number 25. Price point is a $4.99 book by being a new standard edition. But this is the book that reestablishes Aquaman. Uh, a very good book to have. If you don't have it, um, either in newsstand or direct, it's a great book to have in your collection. Another great book, great cover, is Aquaman number 26. And speaking of covers, you've also got, dealing with DC, the A and B covers. I mean, you have a smorgasbord of collectability, uh, collectible items coming out of DC. And that's not even dealing with variants. I mean, you can claim the A and B are variants. I call them alternate covers because they're one for one. It's not like a one for 10 variant, one for 25, one for 50. These are one for one. But the problem with the one for one variants with, um, I mean, alternate covers with DC is that a lot of the dealers are not ordering B cover. Some of them you have to specifically ask for the B cover to um, even get it. You know, um, such as like recently just came out that Supergirl B cover. If you didn't pre-order it, I don't think you're going to get it. You're going to pay a price for it, you know. Batgirl number nine. Whoops. <laughs> this is the origin of Penguin Sun, who will be an established villain in Batgirl's line. These I love. Tom King's I Am Being Run on Batman. This is issue number 17. Will become classic storytelling. Tom King is doing it up. His Batman Elmer Fudd. His Mr. Miracle that just came out. He's a um, writer to be on the lookout for. Some people don't like um, him. I, I, I think what he's done in Batman is great. I have Sheriff of Babylon number one. Somewhere in my um, independent stack way back <laughs> upstairs somewhere, I don't know. I'll dig it out and reread that. Batman number 19, I Am Bane, Batman 20, great, great, great storyteller. There's another linchpin or a key comic book in the making. Batman number 21, with the Flash and Batman investigating what's going on with, um, this button that they're trying to figure out, which leads into the Watchmen um, problem that they're having with DC continuity. I love this cover with um, Thomas Wayne Batman. I've always loved Thomas Wayne Batman. You know, to me, he's like Punisher Batman. You know, he <laughs> takes names, you know. He, <laughs> He, if he got you in his marks, he's going to kill you. He's going to maim you. One of the two. Um, very good issue. This is a great book. Issue number 23 of Batman. A lot of people slept on this book. And I think this book will return as a classic. And as a book that a lot of people are going to want to hunt down. Because this book, to me, is the first time Batman was duped. And he was duped by Swamp Thing. And the thing was that... Swamp Thing's father was killed. And Swamp Thing and Batman got together to solve the case. And Batman was like trying to figure out how come Swamp Thing just was nonchalant about his father being killed. You know, the whole time Swamp Thing played it like it was like no big thing to him. But when they got a hold of his father's killer, Swamp Thing unleashed his own type of justice in front of Batman. And Batman was mad uh, that's the least of it and i mean what could he do he couldn't do anything you're talking about an elemental versus a, a human and after he killed him he told batman he killed me that was my father he killed my father you know and batman was like you coward get back here you know blah 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 i mean but what can you do you're facing an elemental batman Here's another classic book that's um, rising in price, the Batman number 24, with uh, him proposing marriage to Catwoman, which to me fits, you know, it fits. A lot of things are going on in Batman, and if you've got a keen eye, you're seeing that Batman is having second thoughts of being Batman, especially after meeting Thomas Wayne and Thomas Wayne telling him, 
raise your family, don't do this, you know, have a light, you know. Only thing holding Batman from doing that is the fact that he's scared to be Bruce Wayne. If any fear he does have is the fear of being a normal man. He cannot fathom being out of that suit. He's more Batman than Bruce Wayne. Here's some more classic Tom King that's in the making. Batman number 25, The War of Jokes and Riddles, part one. Part two, number 26. Part three. Great covers, great covers. And that's a Riddler cover, number 27. Number 28. A lot of people have been having problems with this um, storyline. It says too slow. I think it's paced just right. That's number 28. Detective Comics number 951. Lady Shiva. A great cover, 954. Batman facing off against uh, Ra's al Ghul or Ra's al Ghul. Zantana, Zatanna appearance in 959. And like I said, all these are price variants. The Flash, first appearance of Black Hole, number 20. Number 21, Reverse Flash, um, dying in issue number 21, where he saw what he says the face of God, which we all know as Dr. Manhattan. Number 22, which is Jay Garrick um, cover. Seems like Flash and Green Lantern appearances always command a premium. Um, and this is uh, issue number 23 of Flash Green Lantern, number 24. Number 26, the first appearance, uh, cameo appearance of Negative Flash, which I feel is worth um, taking a look at. First full appearance of Negative Flash in number 27. Number 18 of Green Arrow, um, a reteaming of him and Speedy of uh, Roy Harper. And number 18, teaming up with Green Arrow, um, Green Arrow teaming up with The Flash in number 26, Wonder Woman in number 27. And like I said, I'm reiterating, these are all price variants. Uh, future Bat. Girl, I can't remember her name, makes her first appearance in Harley Quinn number 20. This is Harley Quinn number 17. And the reason I got this book, I got a lot of copies of this. This is the first um, issue with the backup feature by Paul Dini, who was the creator, or co-creator, I'm sorry, of Harley Quinn. And it's kind of like reminiscent of... Uh, the Batman Adventures cartoon when you read it. And it's a great cover. Issue number 24, just to say, this is a great issue. For one thing, I love Mira. I love her showing her powers and that she's not a slouch, just like Aquaman is not a slouch. And how she can basically, she defeated the entire Justice League, basically, in this issue. She showed them what she was made of. And she's mad because she thinks Arthur is dead uh, currently. Justice League number 26 just as recently came out, uh, introducing the children of the Justice League. I don't know. This has got to be from an alternate um, universe. Um, it's interesting, but it's too early to tell what's going on with this. I got the first appearance, first issue of Justice League of America. Batman's new team, which seems pretty cool. Nightwing, number 16, um, with uh, Dick Grayson versus Damian Wayne. You know, it's funny about Damian. Damian always seems like he has to prove that he's the best Robin, you know. But I really did dig when they had Dick Grayson is Batman when Batman was um, presumed dead. 
and he was Batman and um, Damien was Robin. I, I really liked the, the dynamic that those two had. Professor Pig's Death Wing in issue number 17. Dr. Hurt reintroduction in um, issue number 19. General Zod being inducted into the Suicide Squad in issue number 17. Now, this one I missed the boat on, so I had to pay the price for this one, but I am so happy to have it. Issue number 10 of Superman, the first uh, appearance of the Super Sons. Super Sons number 6. Um, this has the appearance of the new Teen Titans in it. And last but not least, Teen Titans number 6, the introduction of Aqualad. And like I was stressing, you know, this is my opinion, and you can take it with a grain of salt. But like I said, I've been around for a while, since the 70s, and I've been buying books, and I've had a lot of books that I bought at cover price, and books are like in the thousands, like uh, 181 Hulk and um, a couple other books. I mean, I've had them. And I've let a lot go. A lot of them I let go sooner than when I should have. But, I mean, it's the name of the game, you know. And, like I said, my thing is I've enjoyed reading these characters. And they became part of my um, teenage years. Funny books were more of my childhood years. But my teenage college years, um, superheroes all the way. You know, and you get to know these characters in and out, and you appreciate that with these new writers that came aboard, that they're taking care of them, you know, especially in D.C. I can't say too much about, you know, the other one. What's going on with that is kind of like a travesty. Um, and it's sad because they really, the writers and artists that they got over there, not all, don't get me wrong, not all. But quite a few of them, and they have no love, no respect for the characters. They want to use the characters for their own means. And that's not how you write comic books, you know. You have to love what you do. You have to love the characters. You have to love the history of that com their character. You know, don't come in with your own, I'm going to use this character to do my own agenda. You know, there's another platform for that, you know. That's what's going on with the other company. But with DC, like I said, they're going through a renaissance right now. And if you're not careful, you're going to miss the boat and you're going to end up paying for it in the end run. You're going to end up <clears throat> paying a lot of money for books that you could have gotten um, at an early, early time, right off the bat, right off the press. You know, open your eyes, read. Get to learn characters. Learn them. By reading and learning these characters, you'll start noticing things about them that, yeah, this character is going to be hot. This character is definitely going to be hot. Oh, this character's lame. He's not going nowhere. And, of course, there are the few that, that buck the system, you know, that you would think would be hot that never made it to hot status. You got some that people are wishing were hot and just aren't hot, like Dark Hawk, Moon Knight. I love both of those characters. You know, I'm one of the ones who wish they were like, but really they're not. I mean, you can get their books cheap, dirt cheap. You can get Dark Hawk in the dollar bin all day long. Same thing with Moon Knight. Even um, um, Grand Old Covers, you can find them in the dollar bin. I've found quite a few of them, you know. Then you got some characters that <clears throat> amaze it become hot squirrel girl i still can't figure that one out i can't figure it out see her first appearance don't get me wrong i like steve dicto art but that was cruddy that was some cruddy stuff going on that looked ugly i mean she's all ugly i mean not trying to be funny it's just funny looking it's like a comic book character a cartoon character more than a comic book character and that's what kind of offsets me with, with the whole squirrel girl in this. She doesn't even fit with uh, other characters in comic books. You know, she she seems like she's more for um, 
um, um, animaniacs or something, you know, <coughs> to be honest. But like I said, getting back to where I should be, um, yeah, these are books, newsstand books. I know they're hard to find, but the dividends you can reap from them in the years to come is just astronomical. I mean, because there's not many of them. And then on top of that, the ones that are being sold, there's not many of them being sold. Like I said, 1% of them are out there. And then if you take into account the ones that don't sell, they destroy or send them back. You don't see them no more. You do not see them no more. <laughs> it, that's all I can say. You don't see them anymore. And for a dollar more to pay for them, I mean, uh, I just say, and time will tell. And I could be wrong, but judging by what's going on, I think I'm right. Well, this is Bad Avenger. Y'all guys enjoy yourself. Um, love each other, you know. You know, just love each other. God bless everybody, you know. And like I said, this is a fun um, hobby. It's got so many facets, so many things you can do with it. I mean, you got all types of different types of collectors and comic books. And don't knock one person because they like this or they do things this way. I mean, we all got our own way of doing things, you know. And nobody's perfect. Nobody. You do what you feel is best for you. And on that note, I am signing out. Y'all guys take care.